It's actually not very good. You might not know it by looking at me, but I'm no billionaire and time is money, so I'll not waste yours. Hi, I'm Josh. This is Josh Build Stuff, and today we are talking about the all new Mega Tesla Cybertruck set. Mega is the name of the brand that this set is from. It is a Mega Construct set, not a Lego set. Mega is also not the word that I would use to describe the quality of this set, but we'll get to that in a second. This set became available for pre-order in November 2021, shipped in December 2021, and at the time of making this video is sold out, but you can sign up for email alerts if you are interested in getting this set still. This set contains 3,283 pieces, says it's for ages 14 plus, but it's an adult equivalent Lego set, except it is, again, Mega Constructs. Now I know your time is almost as valuable as mine, so let's get right into it. In today's video, I will give you some of my initial impressions about this set. We'll do that up top for those of you who are lazy and may not have even made it to this point. In the video, I'll talk about the cool details and features of this set because that's probably a lot of the reason that you all are here. You want to see all the cool things about this set, not hear me say all the bad things about this set. But then we will also talk about the build of this set because I have a lot of opinions about it because it wasn't actually very great. So stick around. We will do all of that starting right now after a brief disclaimer. The disclaimer is I am a fan of Tesla and Lego, obviously. I don't mind Mega Constructs as a brand, but all of my impressions about this set, all the things that I may say about this set that may be construed as negative or may just be outwardly, obviously, negative. I am only talking about this Lego set and maybe Mega Constructs as a brand as it compares to Lego. It is not a slight or a, an insult to Tesla or SpaceX or Elon or Dogecoin or any of the things that you may hold near and dear to your heart. I like all of those things too, but this set does not uh, stand up to the same standards that all those cool brands do. Okay, let's jump right on into it, talking about my initial impressions of this set. My initial impressions about this set, or JBS impressions as I like to call them around here, um, it's not great. It's not terrible. It is terrible in some respects, but it's not great in a lot of other respects, as long as we're being real general, real middle of the line. Uh, I'm going to try to present this review from the perspective of me, that much should be obvious, but from the perspective of me talking to you as a potential consumer, as someone who is maybe interested in buying this set, and maybe by the end of this video I will have an answer for whether or not you should purchase this set. Here's the thing. This is, um, it's big, and so it took a while to build. We'll talk about that in a second, and so it wasn't the most pleasant build experience. Um, my, my initial impressions, before we get too far into this, it's just okay. The build kinda was kind of terrible without just straight up calling it terrible. In the end, you're left with a really big build. Some building block sets, Lego specifically, they're good just because they are large. I'm talking like the UCS Star Destroyer or the UCS Republic Gunshipper. I'm sure there are other examples out there that aren't just UCS Lego Star Wars sets. Some sets are solely good because they are large. This set kind of falls into that category. Look how big it is. I'm an average size human being in this set it's very big, it's substantial, it's heavy, it's cool in that regard. If you're looking for a cool display piece to show off to you and your Tesla friends, sure, this may be the one for you. However, uh, it's not Lego, and so you will have to kind of explain that to your friends, and I mean, there's a little bit of shame associated with that, so uh, take that as you will. To round out my thoughts here, I built this set a few weeks ago, and I don't want to say that this set isn't great just because the build wasn't very enjoyable. So I gave it a little bit of time and after having some time to think and reflect and spend time with this set floating around my office, um, it's still not great. I know you're wondering why isn't it great? Well, I'll tell you about some of the features which uh, are okay and then I'll tell you about the build which really makes this set not very good for those thinking about buying it. Those are my initial thoughts. If you like Tesla, if you want to spend 250 bucks on a cool display item, then sure, go for it. It looks cool enough by itself, disregarding any features or functions or playability or the build experience. Sure, that part is fine. Let's talk about those features and functions in the build experience, and then maybe your opinion will be further swayed. We'll see. Let's talk details, features, and playability about this set. Also, are aesthetics a feature? They, if they are, then this set checks the box. That is to say that this set is as boxy as you'd expect a Lego Cybertruck to be. It has, it got the angles 
pretty right, especially for a vehicle which is not readily available to consumers like it has the general shape down, which you would hope at the very least it would have that. There's also some playability built into this thing. It has like the front wheels can turn, the whole thing can roll, which is really bare minimum here. But honestly, I was a little surprised that uh, Mega Constructs even gave us that feature, but there's not a lot going on here on the bottom of the vehicle as something falls off. Uh, the front wheels turn, the back wheels uh, roll, that's about it. That's that's the entirety of the Technic elements on the bottom of this thing. Also, you may notice it looks like the vehicle is raised here. An adjustable suspension is one of the features that this set boasts. However, this like this flex in the suspension, I don't think that's a feature. That's literally just a flex in the plastic pieces holding these things together. But if you look in either the front trunk or frunk or under the rear tailgate, which also opens, there's a little red lever in both of these, and that lets me adjust the suspension. If I hold this down, I can lower the vehicle and then the wheels are lower than they were before. Same for the rear of the vehicle. Now the whole thing is riding a little bit lower. That's pretty cool. This is kind of on like a, I don't know, it's like a gear gravity system, I'm going to call it. As I lift this up, you'll hear a click and another click. And that kind of locks the suspension into place at a higher height. I leave it at this higher height, mostly because that's just what it wants to be at when you're moving the thing around. That's about the coolest feature included in this thing and about the most technically complicated piece in this whole build. Now, I might sound a little disappointed there, but if you think about like large Lego creator vehicles, especially the stuff they've been coming out with lately, like the steering wheel in every vehicle, like that will control the steering on the front of the vehicle. And there's like all kinds of other features and stuff going on. And here it's just kind of, it's lacking. But again, it's not lacking for what it is. It's just lacking when you compare it to Lego, which is unfortunately always going to be the case. But there are some other things on this vehicle that move like, the doors open which they're a little difficult to open because i know it's a feature of the of the real thing but like there's no door handles and also the back door gets a little stuck there but all four doors do open which is pretty cool also as i already showed the hood and the back tailgate those go down also pretty cool there's a decent interior we'll try to look at that in a second uh there's also a cool uh moving truck bed cover here i think that has a unique weird cyber truck name this is actually really nicely done because it is like a rolling shutter system you can see it's got a little bit of movement there it is sliding basically along tracks within this bed and then kind of sliding downward um inside here so it doesn't go into the vehicle or, or like into this top part it honestly does like it's like a roll a roll top desk just like in that uh, oh brother where art thou movie also in this back tailgate which folds down uh, there is a little bit that comes out there. That's the part that broke earlier because this part which covers that, that wants to pop off all the time. You can kind of see the mechanics of what is going on here. There's just a little like sliding piece in there and that gets sandwiched up inside this area. Uh, and that can be opened like a, uh, a ramp, which is a feature of the real vehicle. And now it's cool to see that reflected in the model here. Also within this hidden tailgate storage, this is maybe my favorite part of the entire build. I'll try to pull these out. There is a little round spherical uh, chrome ball. There's also a little orange sledgehammer. These, of course, are supposed to represent uh, the, the the tools used at the original uh, Cybertruck reveal where Musk threw a little uh, chrome ball at the window of this car. It broke the window of this car, much to everyone's surprise. And then I think they tried to dent the thing with a sledgehammer on the stainless steel side. And again, I think it did I don't maybe that maybe the side held up better than the window did that's another cool thing about this build uh, Mega actually included some alternative windows that you can put on that include that little bit of crack stuff I have opted for the cleaner look didn't put those on but I think it was fun that uh, Mega and Tesla both acknowledged that in this model again if you are like me and you built a lot of lego these windows may actually surprise you because they did me they're like a kind of flexible very thin plastic piece that's clear so they're not built out of bricks themselves i think it's actually kind of a nice effect i wouldn't mind that sort of thing on lego builds or just like lego will just leave out windows a lot of the time or like have to manufacture large windshield pieces on a on a size like this i don't know what they would do and so it's exciting to see this kind of thing being used i wouldn't mind that on lego it's cool here but it's also it's not the best it collects a lot of dust a lot of fingerprints but it's kind of whatever while we're speaking about windows one of the things that i like maybe least about this set is this sunroof area because this is actually made 
out of uh, clear bricks, but there's so much going on within the bricks that it just, it kind of looks bad just sitting across the top of this thing. Honestly, I'd rather leave the thing off. You can also see the mm. interior when you take that off. The interior is actually maybe my favorite part of this entire build. I appreciate the detail that Mega went into, into getting everything in place here. It honestly looks like it could easily seat six and there are some parts that fold down like the center console in between the front two seats. There's a little Tesla thermos there. I like that. The dash is very cool looking. It's like a marbled piece, which is very different from stuff that Lego will give us. The steering wheel, they gave us this yoke option. There's like a gas and brake pedal under there. This big center screen, which is obviously like a feature of all Tesla vehicles at this point. They give you a couple of alternative tiles that you can put there so you can be like, oh, I'm navigating through a city or I'm seeing these other things on there. A center console also folds down in the back seat. There's a little bit of detail in the seats themselves. There are a cup holders included in this build. I don't know if I can think of any Lego sets which have included cup holders in the builds. I appreciate those parts of this build very much. So the interior is very well done. The exterior, actually not terrible either. Like the doors kind of have trouble lining up with each other sometimes, but otherwise like this big, the, the whole outside being covered in these silver panels, I think it works pretty well. Like you got very subtle headlights there, very subtle tail lights there. Otherwise, I think this thing has all of the features that die hard and casual Tesla Cybertruck fans could really ask for. And also again, it's huge, it's heavy, and that's like most of its appeal, right? That's most the appeal of the real thing right we're like look how big the real cyber truck is i want to see that thing driving on roads look how big this mega cyber truck model is mega in this case could actually be denoting the size of this set not necessarily the quality of this set the bricks are subpar compared to lego but hey it's mega in size Build for me, ironically, is kind of where this whole thing fell apart. For one, it is a Mega Constructs build, and I know I'm making this comparison a lot, but honestly, I build a lot of Lego, and just the feel of a Mega Constructs block is so different. It feels like a sharper block. Plate blocks just don't, they don't fit together as well. You have to put so much force just behind getting two plates to adhere nicely to each other, and if you don't get them to line up just correctly, then it will mess up the build steps and steps down the line. And also this entire build is, it's basically consistent of, I'm gonna say about four colors. And the majority of the build is two of those colors. That's like the body of the thing is either this really dark slate gray color or black. And every bag mixes those two colors indiscriminately. And it's the instructions there. I mean, the contrast settings were broken on the inkjet that day when printing out these instructions because it is impossible to decipher between those two colors. And Mega Constructs kind of acknowledge this. They give you two bricks in a separate bag and they say these are two colors that are contained within this set. Try not to mix them up, but you still will. And while we're talking slash complaining about the instructions for this set, uh, again, it's so different than the way Lego does things. Lego will often tell you the pieces that you need for a specific set and then they will show you those pieces in place on the in progress build. Mega Constructs also shows you the pieces you need for a step, but then they kind of show them hovering somewhere above this, the set itself, where they're going to land, but you kind of have to decipher where they're going to fall using this strange color coding model that doesn't really work. And most of the time you can't line up the pieces in the air before putting them down in place. It becomes a guessing game and it kind of, it prevented the build experience from falling into this sort of Lego build catharsis, I call it, where you just kind of, you don't have to pay so much attention to what you're doing. You can kind of zone out and concentrate on other things or watch something in the background or whatnot. But during the entirety, of this build, which was a very long build, you had to pay attention. And it was a bit tedious, I hate to say, because the last thing you want is for a large build to become tedious because that'll just make a long lasting build last even longer. There are of course some cool build techniques that are going on here. There are a lot of interesting angles and stuff that had to be achieved to get the correct contours and look of the Cybertruck. Mega Constructs did that just fine. It's still cool. In the end, we're left with the final product, which is huge, which is cool, which is neat looking, but the build experience kind of, I don't know, it's, it's making me have trouble seeing the finished beautiful completed build and instead I'm just I'm reminiscing about the uncomfortable build experience I had to go through in order to get to this rather cool finished product. 
I know at this point it probably sounds like I've just been complaining about a big $250 toy that I got and I sound a little spoiled, a little entitled, and I'll acknowledge that I am both of those things, but I don't want to sound that way right now. I recognize that this thing is very cool. It would look very cool on a shelf. I am. I appreciate the fact that I have it. I love Tesla. I like Cybertrucks. I think they're very cool. I think the finished product here is very cool. If you are a common consumer who is considering buying this set, you might really enjoy it. Like, look out for that build. It's going to take a while. Maybe space the thing out. I don't know. Do some finger workouts to get yourself prepared. Build some Lego Technic sets, uh, and you'll be you'll be more than prepared to build this set. That being said, the features are very cool. The details are very cool. The size and heft of this set, I very much appreciate that. I love there's, that there's an interior here. I love that the front trunk opens and the back bed folds down. You got that, whatever they call it, with the, the thing that closes closes up the back bed. I love all the things that are going on here. I think Mega did a decent job with the task they were given here to create this vehicle at a very large scale. And again, I'm very biased because I like building very large detailed Lego sets and Lego just gives you that little bit extra, that little bit more. And so maybe I shouldn't, I shouldn't speak so negatively about this set specifically or Mega Construct specifically. I should instead just say that Lego steps it up. They bring it thing, they bring things to another level that they don't always need to, but Honestly, I'm not going to dislike Mega more for after having built this set. I'm just going to appreciate Lego even more after having built this. And so long as we are comparing this set to Lego, the price for this set is actually not terrible considering this size and piece count for a Lego set. You'd probably be paying $350 for that kind of thing in America, but this is only $250, only with an asterisk, obviously that is beyond a lot of people's price point for a big old toy, but for $250, this is a pretty nice, substantial model. It would look cool on display, you Tesla fans out there. I think you would really appreciate this build. No, you would really appreciate this finished product. You probably won't love the build, but the finished product is what you're probably after, and so, I, yeah, that's, that's worth $250 to me. However, if you are a highly casual fan and you see this set online, you're like, I kind of like Teslas and I kind of like Lego, this set may not be for you. I'm trying to speak to a very specific demographic right now. People who like Tesla, people who like Lego, at least at a casual level, and people who like me. The demographic got a lot smaller all of a sudden. Basically, I'm talking to my brother who has a Tesla, my brother-in-law who has a Tesla, and my friend Bert who has a Tesla, who's like a brother to me. If any of you would watch this video and consider this as a uh, as a build that you might want to buy, uh, fair warning, the build kind of stinks. The finished product is large and you will need a place to store it. You may need to speak to your wife before spending this kind of money and trying to put this kind of thing on the mantle in your living room. Uh, but otherwise, you'll probably love this finished product, but just be prepared. Uh, the build is okay when you when you get to that part, but the finished product is big and beautiful, just like all of you, brothers and Bert. And so in an effort to not further belabor any points that I have long since belabored, my final thoughts are this. The finished product here, it's big, it's beautiful, it's very cool, but the build for this thing kind of stinks. And also due to licensing concerns, this is probably the only large scale brick built version of this vehicle that we are going to get. And so you kind of, you just, you should, might as well just settle for this guy, which sounds like a conversation I had with my wife about 12 years ago. And things are going okay around here, right? So uh, this thing might not be so bad in the, in the future outlook of things. As always, I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope you found some of the points that I've made at least helpful or relevant or salient or amusing at the very least. Those are the big four. We hope to hit at least one of them per video. Also, don't expect this level of effort in every single video. We do a lot of different things on this channel. I hope you stick around and hit the like and subscribe button to see what else comes out of this channel. Again, thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you next time. It's like this guy's flying by the seat of his pants and his mouth is speaking faster than his brain can keep up and in the end it just kind of rambles and goes and I guess every once in a while something he says makes sense but most of the time, uh-uh.